everybody welcome to today's session in the session first of all let me introduce the text prescribed for common course english for the third semester undergraduate students of mahatma gandhi university it is literature and as identity this textbook aims at giving students an idea on the relationship between literature and identity you know literature and life are closely related literature is in fact the mirror of life when the writer writes his life and experience it is in fact a representation of his identity too this textbook includes five modules that acquaint us with the issues of identity in every sphere of life well now let's discuss a poem postcard from kashmir by aga shahid ali in the first module diasporic identities before coming to the poem let me give you a brief idea on diasporic identities you know diaspora signifies people who are scattered or dispersed to various places outside their home country or exiled from their home country for various reasons the reasons may be business war natural disaster finding a job forced labor or in pursuit of a better education thus diaspora results in separation nostalgia and inclination towards their home country you know home is something more than a house we miss in exile diasporic literature consists of literary works of authors who have settled outside their home country and have written in the culture and tradition of their home country thus in diasporic writers imagination the main focus is their home country you know aga shahid ali being an immigrant in a western country has a similar feeling for his lost homeland kashmir okay a few words on aga shahid ali you know aga shahid ali was an indian american kashmiri poet he was born in delhi and brought up in a wealthy and eminent muslim family in srinagar he earned his ma from the university of delhi and phd from pennsylvania state university besides he earned mfa degree from the university of arizona Aga Shahid Ali received many awards and fellowships and taught at various universities across America. You know one of the universities of Utah has instituted an annual Aga Shahid Ali Poetry Prize in the poet's memory. Now his best known works include A Walk Through the Yellow Pages, The Half Inch Himalayas, A Nostalgic Map of America, The Country Without a Post Office, Rooms Are Never Finished. You know the last one rooms are never finished was a finalist for the National Book Award in 2001. He died at the age of 52 due to brain tumor. As a poet he is known for his novel style of poetry. Much of his poetry was written when he was away from his home Kashmir which he recreates through his memories and words. Postcard from Kashmir was published in the Half Inch Himalayas in 1987. Now let's come to the poem Postcard from Kashmir. I don't know whether the new generation is familiar with postcards or not. You know postcards are usually sent from a place that you visit on holidays. They are sent home from wherever you are. But here it is quite interesting to note that Aga Shahid Ali receives a postcard from his home country Kashmir, the heaven on the earth. And you know postcards usually contain only a small amount of information and postcards have a picture on one surface the information contained in the postcard is not private at all because it can be read by anyone who handles it this is how the poem begins kashmir shrinks into my mailbox my home a neat 4 by 6 inches you know in these opening lines The poet describes a postcard he receives from his homeland Kashmir. This postcard contains a photograph of the Kashmiri landscape. This 4 by 6 inches postcard evokes in him a nostalgia for his homeland. 
you know the first line kashmir shrinks into my mailbox refers to kashmir shrinking into the poet's mailbox mailbox is a typical american usage for post box the word shrinks refers to the idea of diminishing something becoming less smaller in size than the original self so what the poet here means is the immense grandeur or magnificence of kashmir has been reduced to the status of a tiny photograph on the little postcard he holds in his hand my home a neat 4 by 6 inches you know home usually refers to a place where we currently live in it is very clear aga shal dali is geographically distant from his homeland kashmir so the use of the word home is ironic here i mean opposite of what home literally means of course aga shal dali was born in kashmir and lived there but now he apparently lives in a western country my home a neat 4 by 6 inches neat 4 by 6 inches refers to not only the regular shape of the postcard but also the neat and harmonious kashmir in the poet's memories it is far away from the traumatic reality of kashmir in fact the postcard is poet's homeland in miniature i always loved neatness now i hold the half inch himalayas in my hand as i told you neat refers to the harmonious kashmir in poet's memories you may have noticed the poet using past tense here i always loved neatness and it is the only place where the poet uses past tense it reveals that war torn kashmir is no longer as calm and peaceful as it used to be as you all know kashmir is the most inflammable part among india china and pakistan now i hold the half inch himalayas in my hand means the mighty impressive mountain range himalayas has been reduced to a small tiny picture on the postcard one of the most impressive aspects of his homeland has thus been shrunk and made to seem far less impressive and significant although the speaker holds the postcard he has in more literal ways lost touch with the land he loves Himalayas in reality is the most gigantic and iconic mountain range in the world. Half inch and hand are tiny in comparison with the Himalayas. And there is a reversal here in terms of meaning. What is usually gigantic is extremely small here and the hand that is small is now large enough to fit the Himalayas into. Here the poet uses a figure of speech alliteration. You know, alliteration is a repetition of consonants at the beginning of two or more words immediately succeeding each other or at short intervals. Here you might have noticed a repetition of eight sound in half, Himalayas and hand. Moreover, it is again a representation of neatness that the poet loves. Now it's the third stanza. This is home and this is the closest I'll ever be to home when I return. The colors won't be so brilliant. The gelems water so clean, so ultramarine. My love so overexposed. This is home and this is the closest I'll ever be to home. You know the tone of the poem is getting more serious and emotional here. What a powerful rhetorical repetition of the word home that emphasizes the poet's deep affection towards the land he loves. Although the poet longs to be at home, the chance to do so is thin. This stanza begins with a direct statement, this is my home. But the use of the word home here is a bit ambiguous. It may suggest the place where he currently lives in or his homeland kashmir now in the next line he speaks of his return as you know since he is an immigrant in a western country it is quite impossible to return to his homeland kashmir so the postcard here actually serves as a substitute for 
an actual visit to his home. The poet continues to build up a bitter mood by imagining what Kashmir would be like when he returns. Kashmir won't be so colourful as it is now presented in the postcard or the ideal Kashmir in poet's memories. He fears that Kashmir would have lost its beauty and splendour because of the conflicts and violence. You know, the clean, sparkling Jhelum's water may be stained with blood and may lose its ultramarine, I mean the deep blue colour. The repetition of the word so here intensifies the poet's pity and lament for the destruction of Kashmir. The poet's emotion reaches a climax in the line, my love so overexposed. You know, here the word overexposed suggests the poet's overwhelming affection and deep love for Kashmir. You know, this word overexposed is usually associated with photography. An overexposed photograph is the one with too much light. Now let me recite the last stanza of the poem. And my memory will be a little out of focus, in it a giant negative, black and white, still undeveloped. The last stanza says about the poet's memory. Kashmir in the poet's memory is not the Kashmir of a glossy postcard. It's a little out of focus. Here you might have noticed the stark contrast between the brilliant colors on the postcard and the black and negative in the poet's memory. A negative that is still undeveloped as opposed to the image on the postcard. The poet's memories of Kashmir is like an undeveloped film of black and white colors where beauty and tragedy are blended. It's difficult to separate his vague memories as they are pieces of flashback and feelings that tangle together, that is good and bad things tangled together. Being away from his home country for so long has almost faded away his memories regarding his homeland Kashmir. Thus the whole poem postcard from Kashmir suggests that Aga Shah Dali misses his homeland Kashmir very much. The poem has elements of loss of one's homeland loss of one's national identity as well as how being far away for so long has almost faded away one's memories regarding home. So definitely it's a beautiful portrayal of one's nostalgia for his homeland. So that's the end of the session. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.